Hi, I'm Kylie, and this is Eli. <laughs> He's a little confused. Uh, this is what's in your cat food. Eli is the main reason that I started doing this. He was born September 24th of 2005, which means this September he's going to be six years old. That's a big number. <laughs> um, the reason I'm starting this is actually because of Eli. Uh, a few years, maybe two years back, a year ago, something like that, he um, started having some trouble using the litter pan. I noticed that he was straining more, and normally he's quite a strong, you know, peer. <laughs> it was like a jet stream. And it started to, you know, not much would come out, and he would have to really strain for it, and that worried me. So one of my first thoughts was, you know, oh, well, we'll have to put him on, you know, one of those special diets, you know, we'll start getting him a Purina or Science Diet or something like that, because, you know, those are more expensive, so they've got to be more healthy, right? And then, because I am, since, you know, I'm an adult now, and I, I know I have animals of my own to take care of, I research before I do anything. I research and research and research. So, of course, this is no different. This is something I decided I would research. Um, it clicked in my mind. I had a cat when I was much younger who died of urinary problems. He had an infection that was so bad there was nothing they could do about it. So, it just kept coming back and eventually got to the point where they couldn't treat it. So he had to be put down and I remember my parents talking about ash and I kept thinking to myself, well, you know, I don't understand why ash is in cat food and what, if it's so bad for them and causes all these problems, why do they put it in cat food? There has to be something better out there, a better option than all of this, you know, just the cycle of food that's not good for cats and causing problems and eventually killing them. So I did my research, and what I found was pretty shocking, that, you know, things that you think you can trust, like your vet, you can't. That's the brands that they push when you see a whole shelf full of cat food, they're paid to push those. So when they say, you know, science diet, number one, recommended by vets, it's because they're paid to push that. Vets really aren't trained on nutrition. They're trained on how to treat cats and dogs and look for diseases, but they aren't trained on nutrition. So that's something that you're going to have to look into yourself and um, uh, be aware, consciously aware of what your cats are eating instead of, you know, just relying on brand names and commercials and things like, you know, com complete diet or balanced nutrition or, you know, low protein source. You're going to have to read ingredients and know what you're looking for, which is tough because there are a lot of confusing things on labels. Like, you know, what's the difference between byproduct and meal and all of that. So I'm going to cover a little bit of that today. Um, <clears throat> now, I know um, with me, when I thought, you know, he'll have to go on a special diet, that uh, it's one of the first things I looked into, and I found out that those diets are designed to prevent one type of crystal from forming, but they actually encourage another type of crystal to form. So, excuse me, my allergies are bad. I don't have a coughing fit. Um, so, they encourage another type of crystal to form. So it's not actually the greatest. I mean, some cats it's great. Some cats do great on those things. And, you know, if your cat is great, I would still look into a healthier diet and make sure the ingredients are good. But, you know, if, if you don't want to risk it, that's your choice. Anyway, there are more alternative, there are other, you know, alternatives to those diets. A lot of foods will include um, cranberries and blueberries, which are really good naturally to keep the urinary tract healthy. And, um, Something you want to look for if your cat has problems is low ash and magnesium, which are known to cause problems in cats with urinary tract issues. So, we're going to look at, at a few brands really quick, common brands that people use. The first one I'm going to look at is Friskies. Um, the flavor is Surfin and Turfin Favorites Dried Cat Food. <clears throat> now this, I'm looking at PetSmart and... Um, for a 3.15 pound bag, it is supposedly $4.99. The ingredients, now when you look at cat food, you really want to look at all of them. But the most important ingredients are the first five ingredients, especially if there are a lot of ingredients. That means the first five are really the only ones that matter because the rest don't have, aren't that high of concentration. So. First ingredient, ground yellow corn. Cats have absolutely no use for corn. 
it just gets converted into, you know, like, sugar, and blood sugar messes with all that. I can't go into it in detail right now because this video was going to run long anyways. So, that actually can cause cat diabetes in cats, and it definitely causes obesity, and so it causes all kinds of problems. Corn is not something that you want, it's a filler. First ingredient, corn, filler. Next ingredient, chicken byproduct meal. Byproducts are something you absolutely want to avoid. Byproducts are like skin and hooves and feet and bones and fur, eyes, gross stuff like that. You know, all the stuff that isn't used for absolutely anything else. This is what it gets used for. So not only is it a byproduct, but it's a meal. Now, the first ingredient should always be uh, in a quality cat food. It will always be some kind of meat. You know, chicken, turkey, beef, something like that. Not a chicken meal or turkey meal, but an actual meat. So, the fact that this doesn't even have any type of meat without being a meal, it's not that great already. So, first two ingredients are ground yellow corn, chicken byproduct meal. Next ingredient, brewer's rice. Rice, cats have absolutely no use for it. It's a filler. Corn gluten meal. Now, we all have heard, you know, people in an uproar about gluten and how we are shouldn't have gluten, and a lot of people are sensitive to gluten, cats are no different. Gluten's not great for cats, so corn gluten meal, not good. And then wheat flour. So that is granular corn, chicken byproduct, rice, and corn gluten, and wheat flour. So those are the first five ingredients. And absolutely none of them are something that your cat needs or should even have. So frisky is not great. Sure, it's got a good price, $4.99 for three pounds, I mean, you know, you're like, oh, wow, that's great. Not really. Not when it's, you know, absolute crap <laughs> for your cat. It's really got nothing that she nutritionally, he or she nutritionally needs. So, and the next ingredients after that is beef tallow, which is a suet byproduct. So, it's, you know those little blocks of fat that you feed birds in the winter? <laughs> this is a, a product of suet. That's what tallow is. And then, you know, it goes into soybean meal. Absolutely no use for that ocean fish meal, animal liver flavor. They don't tell you what animal, which I've heard when it says animal, it doesn't list a specific thing. I have absolutely no idea if this is true. Don't quote me on it. But I've heard it's things like, you know, discarded pets and, you know, horses and things like that. I certainly hope it's not true, but I've, I've heard it is. So I have no idea. But anyways, they don't tell you what type of animal, and it's not even that actual liver. It's just liver flavor. And then they go into, you know, minerals and nutrients. So that is four ninety nine for three point five pounds three point one five pounds and that's the friskies. Next thing people will think, oh, Purina. So we'll look at Purina cat chow real quick. This is um, first five ingredients real quick. Cornmeal. This one's really absolutely no better than friskies. Uh, poultry byproduct meal. Corn gluten meal, soy flour and animal fat preserved with uh, taco ferals which is a form of vitamin E. So there you go, and that's pretty much identical to Friskies. Now this is, for a 3.5 pound, it is 5.29. Now this is Purina Cat Chow, so it's basically the same price and it's basically the same ingredients. Not good, not something you want to be feeding your cat. Next thing will people think, oh well yeah, but that's Cat Chow, what about Purina 1? Purina 1 has got to be good, right? I mean it's got, well on the front, it's got pieces of chicken, and some greens, that's got to be healthy, right? No, not really. <laughs> First of all, it says chicken and rice formula. There's absolutely no need for cats to have rice, so why they're advertising that they're using a filler is beyond me. I really don't understand why cat foods do this. So, quickly, ingredients. Chicken. Ha! Ah, this is the first time I've seen this. In fact, this was a surprise to me. I didn't even look at this before. So, Purina 1, the first thing is chicken. Not chicken meal, not chicken byproduct. I'm actually pleased to see that. So, that's actually good. Now, brewer's rice, not great. Corn gluten meal, definitely not great. Uh, poultry byproduct meal, definitely not great. And wheat flour. So this is definitely a step above the others. Still not great. So this is eight fifty nine for a three and a half pound bag. So it's pr almost double the price, and it's not that much better because it's got byproducts and it's got corn, <laughs> corn gluten meal at that. Um, and it goes on to have quite a few more types of um, uh, grains, including wheat gluten, whole grain corn, um, brewers, dried yeast, 
Animal Digest. I just noticed that on there. That is really gross. I don't even know what it is. Anyway, so that's, it's not great, but it's slightly better than the other two for about double price. Now, here's one. I know a lot of people think, you know, if you see natural or holistic, that automatically means it's better. It's not. A lot of times, holistic cat foods are better because people who feed their cats holistic food know what they're looking for, but just because it says natural or holistic does not mean it's good. Always read the ingredients. I cannot stress that enough. So quickly, chicken meal. Not great. Already the other one was better, and this one's... This is $5.99 for a 3.15 pound bag. Okay, so chicken meal, corn gluten meal, soybean meal, brewer's rice, and animal fat. I've been through all these ingredients before. This is not a good food. Now, everyone thinks, you know, oh, well, science diet, vets recommend it. In fact, on their site, it says, you know, number one vets, number one food used by vets, I think it says. So, um, let's look at this. Chicken byproduct meal. I mean, hey, at least some sort of meat is the, you know, meat ingredient is the first thing. Of course, it's a byproduct and it's a meal, so it's really not good at all. The Purina was better. Purina 1 was better than this, but it's still, hey, it's better than some of it. The Friskies is better than Friskies, I guess. So, Brewer's Rice, as I said, not great. Corn gluten meal, definitely not great. Whole grain, whole, ground whole grain corn, ooh, that's a tongue twister, and powdered cellulose are the first five ingredients. Um, not great. None of that is great. And then it has chicken liver flavor. Again, they can't even use actual liver. They have to just use the flavor of it. So, <laughs> again, not great. Now, this is $13.99 for a three and a half pound bag. So, this is over double the price, and it is definitely not good. The Purina was $8.59, so that's almost half the price, and it had better ingredients. I would definitely choose the Purina one over this, but I would not choose any of these, technically. You know. Now, last one is Blue, it's by Blue Buffalo, it's Blue Spa Select. I, my cat normally eats Blue Buffalo dry food, but um, not Spa Select, he eats the wilderness, but I'm just doing general indoor formulas, so I thought I'd do this one, to be fair. Okay, first ingredient, deboned chicken, that's great, that means not only is it actual chicken meat, you know, there's no bones in it, but, you know, it's not meal or byproducts, so that's great, so great first ingredient. Second ingredient, chicken meal. So there we go. Of the first five ingredients, you want at least two, somewhere in there, to be some type of meat. First two are already meat. And one of them, the first ingredient, is a meat ingredient, not bee pro not byproduct, not meal. So that's great. Third ingredient, whole ground barley. Filler, not that bad. Fourth ingredient, fish meal. Not bad. And oatmeal, not bad. Now, you know, I, I'm getting varying, varying things on here, so I'm wondering if this is not quite as accurate, but, you know, it's not an actual review, so I'm not that worried about it um, as to the order of things. But, as you can see, this is a lot better. Now, this is, for a three-pound bag, this is eleven ninety-nine. So you get a slight, you get a half a pound less, but you're paying $2 less than the science diet, and you're getting a much better food. So, this was just a real quick review um, and, you know, general guidelines of what to look for in cat food. I will be putting up something along these lines for what food and then some reviews of actual brands that I have used and, um, because I know this stuff is expensive, so if your cat doesn't like shreds or chunks or, <laughs> you know, or pate or things like that, you don't, you know, these expensive brands, you don't want to buy six cans and then find out that it's actually, you know, pate and your cat likes shreds or chunks or, so, it would be nice, I thought it would be nice to know these things ahead of time, and since there's no one out there sharing these things, I thought I would share them with you guys. So, keep watching, I hope you enjoyed this, and found it helpful. Thanks for watching, bye.